What if I told you that you could vibe code your own AI agent builder platform, one where you own the entire infrastructure and you can connect it to all kinds of tools and API requests of your own and not have to wait on another feature release or for another company to build it for you. While everyone's still going nuts about these closed source platforms, I'm gonna show you how you can build your own visual automation builder using something like Repl Agent. It can chain together different agents and tools. And what's awesome is you can store all the history of the different execution runs in something like a Google Sheets in seconds because of their new connectors feature. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I did this, how you can do it too, and most importantly, how you can leverage this new connectors feature in Replit Agent to be able to hook up to different tools and services that otherwise are tricky to work with. If I piqued your interest, then let's dive right in. All right, so I made a very bold claim at the beginning of this video. So let's back it up. This will look very familiar to you to other platforms that you might have seen in the recent past. So if we grab a start node here, and then we grab an AI agent node and hook these up and double click this, I'm gonna say something like, write me a haiku about AI, and then we will pick a model, let's say GPT 4.1 mini. We'll set max tokens, we'll keep it as is. We'll close this up and close that up. Let's hook up another one right here. Let's hook up these two and put this right here. We'll double click on this and I'll just say translate input into, I don't know, Spanish. If I can spell Spanish, there we go. And then we'll do GPT 4.1 mini again. We'll just click out of this and we'll click on run workflow. Now we don't have the fancy spinny things that you might see on other platforms, but this will work. And by the end of this, this will take, and you'll see right there very quickly, if I double click on this node and close on this, it's now taking this haiku and this last node that comes from our node here that says silent thoughts and code, endless patterns come to life, mind born from circuits, and we were able to take this input, use it as an input here, and get the final output from this execution. Does this look familiar? Probably. We can also close this up and bring on a tool call. And if we double click, you'll see we can import a curl request. So what does that mean in plain English? We could theoretically go to perplexity and say something like, can you come back with a curl request on how to call GPT-4.0 using the responses API from OpenAI? Let's say, let's do that and then wait for the response. We'll take that and then import it and see how easy that is. Okay, so we got the response and watch this. We're just gonna copy this over, go back to our visual workflow builder. I'll click on import from curl. We'll paste from the clipboard, click on import and voila. Does this look familiar? You even have the JSON buddy ready to run and ready to go. So this is how it works. And this is me spending a few hours going back and forth with Replit Agent. Just to show you that this stuff isn't rocket science. It is a series of procedures and different features that you can amalgamate together to build a very similar experience to what you've seen out there. So this is it actually running. And what's happening behind the scenes is I had the connectors feature of Replit go and automatically hook up and create a Google Sheet where it stores every single run and all the metadata from those runs every single time. And the best part is I didn't have to specify the columns, I didn't have to specify the connection. Once I did a one-step authentication, it was able to seamlessly connect and interact with that server, just like an MCP server would. Now, before I get into the core build, let me show you how you would navigate that. So if we go into a blank screen, we can go into this new feature they have at the left-hand side called integrations. And this is where you can find all kinds of Replit Manage integrations, but as well as the custom connector. And all you have to do is click on add a new connector. So you can see right here, there are all kinds of services. One of them being Google Docs, as well as Google Calendar, and basically the whole Gmail suite. And they're constantly adding to these connectors over time. And all you have to do is click on something like Google Calendar, click on configure. It will now authenticate you. And then when you click on sign in right here, You'll just go through a normal screen where you connect your calendar. We'll click on continue. It will ask me to select an email service and then we'll go from there. All you have to do in this case is just click on select all, assuming you're cool with all these permissions, click on continue, and then it's connected just like that. Meaning in your prompts now, you can reference things like connect my Google calendar or connect a Google sheet and as a part of the build, you'll be able to double check, ask you for permission to leverage this integration. And then now with one click, you're good to go. Now with that out of the way, how did we put this together? Now I went through a very extensive back and forth and this was not a one shot process. 
But what I did is I tried to take the entire chat history and I did a reverse meta prompt. So you can see how you can get some semblance of this that might not necessarily be perfect in one shot, but will get you at least 80% of the way there. And then the rest is really testing and letting Replit Agent test its own work. So this is a very beefy prompt that I now put together that I'll make available to you for free in the second link in the description below, but we'll just go through the core concepts that are in here. So this part of the prompt right here talks about the front end technologies. And one of the more important ones to include is React Flow. And this is what gives it the infinite canvas where you can drag and move around. And then the rest is basically the components as well as the backend technologies. There's different ways you could build this, but this is the best way that I was able to come up with, especially with the help of Replit Agent. This is the canvas design where you have the start node, agent node, tool node, router node, transform, and an end node, each one with a different color and a different role. Now this part is really important to include, especially if you wanna use newer frontier models like GPT-5, GPT-5 Nano, as well as 4.1 Mini. Both of those APIs have slightly different parameters. One has reasoning effort, one has temperature. So you wanna make sure that if you wanna go down the route of integrating language models like this, that you provide all the clues necessary for Replit to know exactly what it's dealing with. So you'll see here, I have the API endpoints, I have example API calls. So I took this directly from Perplexity, like I showed you moments earlier. And this is a bit of a cheat sheet by AI on how to integrate it from a TypeScript standpoint. Then this is the breakdown of each tool, what it does and how it works, as well as things like the curl import feature, which I just showed you, which lets you take this request and auto populate an API request. And then you have things like the variables, the smart formatting, the execution system where you click on execute and it goes end to end. That didn't work for at least two, three, four iterations until I knew how to prompt it better and get a better handle on how I should tell it what to do. And then you have the little things that we take for granted with these other platforms, like the fact that the process is running, the fact that it's successful, the fact that there's an error, and the fact that if there is an error, it would be helpful to know what that error is and some way to be able to see the result somewhere on some panel. So all of these details are parts of the user journey that I've tried to capture in this prompt that you can use to avoid a lot of the pain and suffering that I went through just because I didn't have full clarity myself on what needed to be built. And then this is the part where we go through Google Sheets logging, where I can just say, each workflow execution should have some form of logs row by row saying the timestamp, workflow name, execution status, and number of nodes executed. In this case, I'm specifying it, but the way it actually worked on its own is it figured it out naturally. So you don't have to necessarily spoon feed it exactly what columns it should implement. It can do that on its own logically, but if you want it to go a certain way, you can dictate that as well. And then when it comes to the UI and UX, things like keyboard shortcuts, the way you select and use and reference metadata from a prior node, all of these, including collapsible panels, had to be specified in order to increase the likelihood they don't deal with what I dealt with. And one thing I didn't show you is that we're actually storing the workflows themselves as different versions in a database. So you can see here we have different workflow versions. We have the workflows themselves that are all called test. And we stored it the same way other platforms might store their workflows in JSON format. So if you actually go back to our workflow builder and we go and just double click on this and we click on export, you'll see that we have this representing this entire workflow. So theoretically, we can download this workflow, import a version of this workflow, and you own this entire infrastructure. You're the boss of how this automation platform works. And the remaining sections cover things like the design, the different node colors, the different badge colors, the different processing, design guidelines. We also have a breakdown of how each node should execute when it interacts with other nodes. So all of these things we have to specify and then we have a common pitfalls to avoid. So things like don't use the OpenAI chat completions API, which is gonna be deprecated soon. Don't add temperature across the board because not all models use temperature. So this is really a process of going through this reverse meta prompting process where everything that I made a mistake on, you now have as a cheat sheet of the AI to not do. And just to give you a sense of the different things that might pop up, using my much better prompt than the one I started with here is as we go down, it'll take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes after you've given it the green light. And you'll start out usually with a perfectly working infinite canvas where you can drag and drop things, move it around, you have the visual connections, but it's a really a result of the order of operations, making sure you always have a trigger, which in this case is our start node. And then as you go down here, 
you'll see that in some cases, sometimes you can even enter a prompt. You need to program everything from telling it, I wanna be able to copy paste something externally into this new node to I wanna be able to write the prompt myself or adjust the prompt in a certain way going back and forth on the user interactions and having it test itself using their feature here that's called app testing. This will take a little bit more time and more tokens, but it will allow it to check its own work. So if there's something that's unbelievably obvious to catch as a mistake, it should be able to catch it on its own without you having to intervene constantly and basically babysitting it. And just to zero in on things that popped up in my journey while building this, initially when I would click on run workflow, it would simulate a result, but not actually execute anything. So I had to be very intentional about that. And then when it came to the tool node, it was initially like a decoration, like a placeholder. You couldn't actually put the proper authentication bear or header or API keys necessary to execute that request. And the next thing, which is really important, especially if you're building a workflow builder, is as you execute every part of the workflow, you wanna make sure that it's maintaining any metadata from the prior one. So if we go back to the app, you'll remember that if I go to create a new node or change the prompt and I remove this entirely, it says right here, use input to get the previous output. Now we could make this a lot more sophisticated where we can store different outputs in some temporary memory where we can reference specific variables from different parts of the workflow, especially if you wanted this to scale to five, 10, 15 nodes. So this is not perfect by any means, but it's really close to at least emulating the initial experience of working with these workflow builders. And that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. Now, there were tons more mistakes and back and forth that I made, so I tried to capture and summarize those in another document I'm also making available in the second link in the description below. But the best part of this experience was I was able to go back and forth on my mobile phone most of the time, instead of actually having to be at my computer building and going back and forth myself. So if you wanna use something like Replit Agent, then you can use my exclusive link down in the description below for 10 bucks off of Replit Core, and that will get you started and in the trenches like I was building something really powerful with pretty much no coding experience needed on your end. And lastly, if you want things like the underlying code and files that you can just use to crank this out in five to 10 minutes and build on what I built on, I make things like this available all the time to my exclusive community members in my early AI adopters community. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, even borderline inspirational, then please let me know down in the comments below. Helps the video, helps the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.